This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you drive long haul, short haul, or heavy haul, they're here to empower and inspire women in the trades on TNCRadio.live. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. You're listening to Women Road Warriors. We're a show designed to empower and inspire women in trucking, in the trades, and everywhere. We cover all kinds of topics. I'm Shelly, and... I'm Kathy. Staying healthy on the road is a huge concern for our women drivers, and their needs are different from men. Today, we have a sought-after educator and author with over 20 years of experience in engaging people about health to bring awareness and self-advocacy. Dr. Noella C. West is a national speaker and adjunct professor at the University of Tampa and the University of South Florida. She's been featured in national nursing magazines and television. She's with us today to share some insights on how our listeners can improve their health. Welcome, Dr. West. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you so much. Hello, Shelly and Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, welcome to the show. I am excited to be here. Um, This is a kind of a twist for me. My father was a truck driver and owned his own business. So this is very fitting. Um, So I understand, yeah, firsthand about the lifestyle of a trucker. And since his passing a couple of years ago, my mother now runs the business along with one of my sisters. So this is truly a woman's road warrior journey for me as well. (laughs) Very cool. (laughs) That is. (laughs) So you understand some of the health challenges that drivers can have. Definitely, definitely, yes. What would you say are some of the biggest health issues that women drivers especially need to consider? Obviously, that eating right on the road, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. And especially after COVID, so many things were closed uh, in Canada, in the United States. Uh, junk food, I would say, is, is uh, very bad, right? Yes, definitely. So we as women, we take care of everyone else if so, for ourselves. So some statistics for you is that there are nearly 3 million long haul truck drivers who transport goods across America, of course. Wow. Yeah. Truck truck driving. Yeah. Truck driving is really rated as the third largest growth occupation, especially now that we have the pandemic. It's really come to the forefront. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Trucking industrializes nations and contribute to over 90 percent of the world's consumer products. So this is this help this field is very important. And particularly we need to make sure that we look at our health while we're doing this type of business. So yeah. cardio metabolic risk factors, uh, lifestyle health behaviors, and mental health are all our top global mm-hmm. effect health concerns when it comes to trucking and the trucking industry. It's huge. And the hours that drivers keep, sleep deprivation is often a real big problem. And if you don't have sleep, you don't have health, right? Correct, correct. A lot of issues that are facing particularly female drivers is that between 174,000 and 290,000 drivers are actually women. Yep. And the percentage is actually growing. That yes, it is. Studies have said, yeah. So there was an actual descriptive study done a couple of years ago about female truck drivers. And the analysis of 284 were actually surveyed and showed only 77.8% had a usual place for health care. So that's a very alarming stat, as well as one in five had no insurance coverage at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's... Um... I've run across that statistic. It's shocking because not all the companies provide, I guess. Yes. And, and of course, if you're an owner operator, sometimes that can be very costly in the United States in terms of the health insurance premiums. Yes, definitely. So what's the health care and trucking industry as a general? Um, I've researched a study that indicated that 54% of men and 66% of women had some sort of health care provider. However, 21% of men and 35% of women had no health insurance. And a lot of these, yeah, a lot of these problems like male and female drivers both reported common health problems like back pain, sinus problems, hypertension, headaches, and even arthritis. So this particular field, we really need to focus on the health problems and what we can do to actually treat those. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
with the repetitive motion and so forth, I would think that's hard on the joints and everything. I mean, it, it's, uh, it could trigger arthritis and all kinds of conditions, and that makes it very problematic. Then you don't get good sleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just becomes a vicious cycle. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, and then this population, there's a high risk for health concerns. Um, other studies and research have shown in this particular area of transportation that 47% lack any type of health care provider whatsoever. And then 20% frequent emergency rooms and urgent care centers whenever they're on the road. However, the majority of those do establish their care when they come back. So they really don't even treat themselves. So we really need to be aware of those things and, and provide some sort of resources. Mm -hmm. I know that some of the drivers have said it's difficult, you know, if they're uh, out for weeks at a time, getting back home and scheduling with a doctor, um, it, it's, it's very hard to do. A lot of them um, are opting for concierge services and that sort of thing with, a, yes. I think, a monthly membership uh, so that they at least have someone who's kind of monitoring what's going on. Yes, correct. The concierge service is a very specialized one-on-one -on -one, um, type of health program that can actually help. We also have the options for telehealth for a lot of the primary care settings as well. So that's also an option. Which is good. Yes. Kathy, are there any questions you have for Dr. West in terms of health concerns that are unique to women drivers? Well, in, in my area where I work, it's a little different than the long haul truck drivers, but in a, in a sense, like I'll explain it to you, um, we work on a rotational basis. So we work 14 days on and then we get 14 days off, right? Mm -hmm. But on the 14 days that we work, we're literally sitting in our equipments for 13 hours a day. And we're allowed two breaks of, of half an hour, which is usually 10 minute bathroom and 20 minute sleep, right? Yeah. That's how that goes. But um, the, the co most common, um, there's not a lot of women, like uh, in, in my, on my crew itself, there's 140 people, there's 12 women. And in the locker rooms, the most common issues are weight gain. Mm -hmm. um, um, a, a lot of people are developing diabetes. Uh, mm -hmm. They're having, they're talking about um, migraines. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another one is, um, that, well, just the, the whole, feminine recycling program right the whole having your period and how do you manage that when you're sitting in a truck and uh -huh. um, we have constant constant uh, conversations about that because I mean it's really difficult to do but um, what would you say besides obviously the, the whole you know proper diet is there any recommendations that you would have for lower back pains, like, do, do you know? Cause that's a common thing because we get bounced around so often. It's like, oh my God, sometimes I, I, I literally, I have a bobblehead. I made up a bobblehead uh, as a toy, but that's how I feel when I'm in the equipment. It's like, yes. oh, I get yes. sore neck and upper shoulders. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Yes, that is definitely one of the top eight. I have a list of eight top healthcare concerns and musculoskeletal problems yeah. is one of those as well. So back pain, when you're twisting, you're posturing, you're prolonged sitting, uh, yeah. muscle strain. So yeah, the whole body that vibrates as you're driving, that yeah. triggers some of those things as well. And this also prones you to more back and neck injuries. So as much as you can, make sure that you have proper body mechanics that you can. If you're- Like ergonomics. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So if you have a, a cushion or a seat that's worn, please make sure that that's up to date. If you need back support, make sure you're actually looking at that. Um, yeah, so a lot of people don't use that lumbar support and I, we have them in, embedded in the seats and, and I tell the ladies, do you actually use that? Use it, use what you uh -huh. have available, bring your cushion. Some of the drivers started bringing their own little padding cushions or, or for their back, which is fabulous. But a lot of people don't want to because, oh, I, I look like a, I look like a, like an idiot carrying around my, my back, my bum cushion, right? <laughs> Like, does it really matter what you look like or does it matter how you feel? Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You have one back and you have to take care of that. And exactly. that leads to all kinds of problems. Yes. Yes, yeah. definitely. Obesity is by far, and not just in women, but in, in all heavy, in, in my field, the heavy equipment operator, mm -hmm. um, obesity is the number one problem. It yes. Is. Yes. You're not moving. It and then when you when you do get off shift, people are tired. They like, oh, I'm too tired. I literally I have to push myself. I have no thyroid. 
Um, so I'm taking Synthroid every day. I mean, I'm 52, uh -huh. the whole menopause thing. Uh -huh. If I don't push myself to either do yoga or at least 30 minutes, I'm not saying a, an hour and a half in the gym, minimum 30 minutes on that treadmill or, or some cardio, I have to push myself. Who else uh -huh. is going to do it for me, right? That's right. That's right. And, and obesity is more than just, like you said, the actual diet. There's a, yeah. a hormone imbalance in that as well. And then your circadian rhythm is, is, is actually off. So melatonin or, or food mm. that has high melatonin, such as eggs, milk, fish, cherries, nuts, cherries. And sweet corn, and, uh -huh, and as, as well as pineapples, they're all naturally high in melatonin. So if you take something or eat something with those products in it right before you're trying to sleep, even if it's one of those cat naps that I know, you know, you as truckers always have to have, yeah. that'll actually help. Those are natural things. And then those that are, have to smoke, of course, we don't want you to smoke, but avoid any type of caffeine drinks as well as nicotine before you're actually mm. these, these speaking of caffeine drinks uh -huh. please explain to me many of my co-workers and i know long haul truckers do this as well uh -huh. drink those awful um power sugar oh monster drinks that are so loaded with caffeine and sugar some uh. of my co-workers will drink two and three in a 12-hour shift and i'm like what does that do to the heart i've heard so many yes. bad things about that i've been dying to ask yeah. someone that question <laughs> Yes, those are actually higher risk at strokes and heart attack than if you were smoking. So really, really need to be wow. mindful about the amount of drinks. We've actually had patients who come in that I've seen under my practice to actually be normal, everything's healthy, no blood pressure issues, but they're taking these power shots or these power drinks and trying to get through the day and they're wrestling through. And that has actually caused their blood pressure to elevate that they're actually having strokes. Wow. So they have to yeah. really be careful of that. Yeah. So I, I, just, mm -hmm. sorry, I, one guy at my work, the, the next mine, he was drinking, he was a young guy, something like 35. He was drinking five a day and he ended up having a heart attack and he did, yep. he did die at work. Oh. And they, they were relating it to wow. the drinking five of those monster drinks a day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That really accelerates your, your heart rate. So you really have, have to be careful. And then you're stressing because you're driving, you have weather yeah. conditions and constructions and oh yeah you know these unsafe drivers who are just cutting in front of you when they think you mm -hmm. have a little Corolla I can do this I can do this <laughs> exactly so yeah just w whenever you're ready to do that sleep and wake cycle you know just try to try not to have your your phone or your tablet or, or laptop mm. blue light actually reduces that um mm if you have a, a nice comfortable sleeping bed, maybe have a little curtain, one of those uh, sunblock or one of those blockout curtains yeah. that helps you as well. Yeah. So those are some, some things that you can do to kind of help you settle and kind of get your circadian rhythm ready to, okay, I'm going to sleep now. That way. Okay. I can here's another question. Mm -hmm. um, what about like uh, the people, the truckers that drive night shift? Like I work, I work on a rotational basis. So I'll do 14 days mm -hmm. and then I get 14 off and then I'll do 14 night shifts of 13 mm -hmm. hours. So it really messes up the, the, the rhythm of sleep. So yeah. the, the long haul truckers, there's a lot that like to drive night shifts because there's less traffic on the road. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So Correct. How, sure. how do you get your body back? Because I know it's not, it's not the, the body's not designed to be up all night and sleep all day. And so it really messes things up. Does that um, make aging worse? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it harder on the body to, to re re calibrate itself? I guess you could say. It does show that there are some disadvantages of working those shift words. However, if your body is used to that, Keep on that same cycle. How, when you actually go to sleep and it's during mm -hmm. the day, make sure it's somewhere where it's, it's mostly quiet. You're yeah. shutting everything down. You're concentrating on your actual periods of rest and your body will eventually get used to that. So if you're doing this long, long haul stint, your body will actually get used to that. But of course, in the long term, it does have more stress on, on your body. So you have to really be careful of that. Yeah, I, I know when I'm coming off night shift, sometimes it takes me four or five days mm -hmm, to get mm -hmm. back to normal because I've all I've been up for 30 hours straight and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to, oh my God, I feel, hor I, I feel old. I feel my age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Normally I don't. Normally I feel like I'm in my 30s, right? Let's go. But uh, yeah, lately it's like, oh, you know. 
Right. Well, those so, yeah. hours are just um, incredibly hard on the body, I would think, at any age. Yeah, yeah. you know what? You're yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. And when you mentioned about migraines and stress, you know, oh, yeah. if, you're, if you're dehydrated, that also plays a, a part in it because you're trying to meet your schedules. You're trying to get to where you need to be. So migraines, yes. stress, dehydration, all of that does play a big factor in that. And, and as a woman... You don't want to stop to pee because it takes extra time and you got to do the whole thing. And whereas men, they, they, I mean, they can pee in a bottle and they do. Exactly. <laughs> yes. They do. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It happens. Right. <laughs> we need to invent something for, for women. So I think we yeah, probably no. make enough money that we can carry us all. So, but, and speaking of not going to the bathroom, that leads to another healthcare concerns, urinary tract infections. Yes. yes. As well as ulcers. So Ulcer. ulcers, ulcers. Are, are stress. Yeah. Stress can actually be provoking ulcers. Oh, I yes. did not know that. Yeah. Well, isn't yes. that interesting? Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, isn't um, like, cause I know some, one woman, she refused, uh, this is a few years ago. Uh, she refused, she didn't want to take time to go to the bathroom. So she was holding it, holding it, holding it and not drinking enough. Ended up getting a couple of uh, UTIs. And then it ended up, she uh, got kidney, was going into kidney failure because it got so bad and then she needed dialysis. That's right. Um, oh. From holding, from not wanting to go to the bathroom. Yes. And I and I tell all the ladies, they cannot fire you for going to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> Good God, you know this yes. is your body. You don't, That's you know, you only have one. Take care of it. Right. right. You yeah. know, you have two kidneys, but you don't want to mess those up either. <laughs> no. Exactly. Right? Yes. 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 Oh. And that oh, is, a, it's a problem with all of the drivers. They, they try to time their bathroom breaks and they can't always. Yeah. Women are definitely at a disadvantage. Like you said, I mean, they can't use some sort of yeah. milk jug or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Did you know that 80% of America's communities rely on trucking alone to deliver their goods? The trucking industry keeps America running thanks to the 3.6 million professional truck drivers traveling over 300 billion miles a year. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, tells the story of trucking and its positive impact on our economy, communities, and lives. Learn how you can be part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting truckingmovesamerica.com. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in Northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Also, while we're talking about actual women drivers are sitting and riding in, in trucks, deep vein thrombosis or DVT, oh, also yes. another healthcare factor. So you're prolonged sitting. So if you can try to get out of the truck or while you're in the truck, do some stretches, some movement, or even some support stockings or support yeah. stockings. That can uh, also most, of, that. most of the women with us, like I have a lot of varicose veins. I, I go get injections every year. Mm -hmm. It hurts my legs. So I have to wear those, uh, those stockings. But mm -hmm. even like on my breaks, what I do for, for myself, just to help myself is I'll put my, my feet up, mm -hmm. like above my heart, right? Yes. <laughs> Yes. So way up, uh, way up on the dash and I'll just sit there for like 20 minutes just to kind of help with the circulation. But that yes. is a big problem and you are correct. Absolutely. Yes, that's perfect. Perfect advice about that. And when it comes to your health and the cardiac risk, 
hypertension, hyperlipidemia, which means your elevated cholesterol, all mm. of this stuff can lead to cardiovascular disease, a cardiac, a heart attack, or an MI. So if you're a diabetic, take your insulin with you. If you're on medication, take your medications. I mean, just try to just take care of yourself because you're not going to do anybody any good if you're not taking care of yourself while you're still working. So that's, that's right. Very that's important. True. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I tell some of the ladies in the locker rooms because I mean, they're, they're complaining about various stuff and all oh, the food mm-hmm. is bad. And, and I said, you know, it's the, it's the choices you make. You can have anything in front of you. Do mm-hmm. you have to eat it? No. Even if you're, if you're going to truck stops and um, mm-hmm. like even I got myself driving from Canada all the way here to LA, I, um, I have a, a severe, severe gluten allergy. I, if I have a little bit of gluten, I'm in the hospital. That's it. Right. Okay. So regardless of the food in front of me, you have to, you have to work with what you have. So whether you're diabetic, whatever it is going on with you, mm-hmm. make your life livable that um, in, in your own environment or whatever's around. Right. So bring the food that you that you can eat, uh, bring the snacks that you you want to eat. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So you can't blame it on on. Oh, well, that's all there is to eat. No, this is your life. You fix it for you. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Even if it's one healthy option, you're having yeah. breakfast, maybe you're snacking. OK, let one of OK for, for dinner. I'm going to make sure I get, you know, one of the happy meals with those slices of. Of, of apples in it or something or you know just yeah. make one healthy conscious cho- choice per per day and that really helps yeah and i mean a lot of people say they're 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 stopping at truck stops and they're sitting with people that are all eating these delicious or what looks like good food which really <laughs> isn't <laughs> um sometimes like for myself i'm looking at people eat all these fries and burgers and this and that and here i am with my salad and what, whatever that doesn't have gluten and I'm actually happy because I don't want to be part of that because they're going to have a lot of problems down the road, whereas I might not. That's right. How you right. treat your body and your food. Right. It's self-care. And so forth. Yes, ma'am. It's what I think it's all a part of flipping that mindset, looking at things from a different perspective than other people. Right. Yeah. Setting yourself aside doesn't mean you're an outcast. It right. means, you, you know, you're actually putting yourself above the negativity. You're you're raising your vibrations to a different level. And I think you have one on other people. Yes, definitely. Yeah, really. It really does. Also, make sure you all as, as in the trucking industry and and as women, I know you all have these environmental hazards like this diesel and these toxic fumes and so oh, yeah. make sure that you can at least wear a mask whenever possible and routinely check your your ventilation system as well just to ensure that that's working as well but lung cancer believe it or not is in one of the top five risk factors really no care concerns yes ma'am mm-hmm. wow mm-hmm. now is that from some of the diesel exposure yes. to really yes Yes, okay, and yes. that's not talked about. That's interesting. No, it's that's never talked about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Wow. Yeah. So and that's it, very important. Yeah, like some of this these equipment, you don't realize that you're doing your walk arounds, you're working underneath, you're checking things, and you're inhaling all these horrible toxins. I know because I'm gagging half the time. <laughs> and I never not once thought about wearing a mask. Would you look at that? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. What kind of mask would you recommend for something like that that would actually keep the fumes out and if you're around fumes a lot, I would definitely use one of those respiratory type of masks mm-hmm. that has one of those filters in it. However, mm-hmm. if you're doing just your regular checks on a daily level, even the mask that we're wearing now for COVID and these p- pandemics, that will filter out some of that as well. Okay. Hmm. So it provides somewhat of a barrier, which, which yes. is better than nothing for sure. Absolutely. One last thing that I want to mention is that depression and isolation is a big barrier as well and a risk factor mm-hmm. when it comes to actually driving because you're away from your home and family and friends and you really don't have the support system besides maybe other truckers. Mm-hmm. And mental health can also be play a big role in that as well. So a lot of times as, as female truck drivers, you're probably going through a lot of disrespectful treatment from others, maybe some violence or fear of violence. Yeah. So you really have to be careful of that. There have been some studies about some cases where there were some women drivers that really had some bad experiences. So really be careful of that. And some of these behaviors can cause even riskier behaviors by using drugs or paying Mm -hmm. for sex and some other things. So we, as women, we really have to protect ourselves and protect one another as well. So don't be ashamed. Come forward. If you need help, definitely seek out that as well. Yeah. There's a lot of resources out there. 
for that. And you know, that's something again, that's not talked about a lot, you know, mm -hmm. as, uh, as drivers, mental health and depression. Mm -hmm. Yes. Drivers um, are kind of reluctant, I think, to talk about mm -hmm. it um, because they don't want to have something on record that would mm -hmm. prevent wow. them from driving. You know, yeah. if they're labeled. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that is it's true. true. Yeah. So that's why having programs that discuss that sort of thing, maybe they can get some help that way um, and really do some thinking about what can help them. Uh, because, yeah, mental health, that's that's huge. And last year with COVID, with the pandemic, mm -hmm. that really created some mental health issues and depression and stress. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. uh, drivers in both Canada and the United States had to deal with rest areas being completely shut down. Um, mm -hmm. All kinds of things, and these are frontline workers, and they're being treated like dirt. You know, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's very hard mentally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we do most um, companies uh, in the states? Do they have any employee assistance programs like like we do in Canada? I'm not sure about that. I think it probably ranges on state by state. Those are one of the things that I've tried to research since I live in Florida. There are some areas where there's some truck stops that actually have maybe wellness clinics, or maybe they'll perhaps uh, schedule maybe a mobile van health to kind of come by or leave nice. information in, in the truck stop driver lounges. So I think yeah. that's something that I think we need to as professionals and mm -hmm. that's something near and dear to me too, because of my father is to have these state and local health departments, because this is really a disparity when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, talking to, to lawmakers and things, what is the standard of, of care for truck drivers and the health of those that actually do this business? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dr. West, what would you say in terms of health is different for women versus men? I know the medical community for so many years kind of lumped women in there. They, they looked at men's health rather than looking separately at the issues that confront women. And I think that that has kind of changed the diagnostics and, and set women back for a lot of decades. But it, I know that uh, that's changed. What do women need to consider that men don't? Well, as we actually did open up, women has a lot have a lot more needs mm -hmm. than men do when it comes to their physical health as well. Men are equipped and they're focused on men drivers. However, women have different needs. Women have a different thought process. And the same goes for their health as well. So just as we get fatigued and muscular disorders and sleeping disturbances, we really need to advocate our health insurance and our companies as much as possible mm -hmm. to really have an equal opportunity type of employer and healthcare service for women. That, that makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. Do women require more sleep than men? I think women can actually go longer distances and times with less sleep than men and actually have a productive safe environment when it comes to decision makings, when it comes to producing. Women has this key, I don't, I don't know if you call it a mother instinct, a woman's instinct. Mm -hmm. We can change the baby, go to sleep for three hours, <laughs> go to work full time, run a meeting and come back and cook dinner and do it all over again. We <laughs> rock. No, we really do. Most men would say, you got to be kidding me. Exactly. We rock. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's, so nature it's designed us to be more resilient and amen ways. yes yeah. he knew what he was doing uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so what would you say that women should really keep an eye out for are there symptoms are there things obviously prevention is is the best thing but what should they look for as warning signs that say, hey, you need to get into the doctor? A couple of warning signs that's very important. If you're having chest pain, number one, you need to go see someone immediately, whether it's calling 911 or actually going to, whether it's a hospital and urgent care, your body is talking to you. So whether you're having these aches and pains in your chest, in your stomach, in your back, if you're having these symptoms of feeling dizziness, if you're not thinking clearly, if you're not, your vision is impaired, 
All mm-hmm. of these are signs that there's something going on with you internally, as well as mentally. If you're driving and you don't remember passing a road sign, if you don't remember if you did something or passed this particular road information, there's something mentally as well. You may need some sleep. You may be stressing. You may need to be actually nourished. So get something to, to mm-hmm. drink, some new, some sort of nutrition, snack on something. Your body is your vessel and when it starts talking to you and those lights just as you do on your on your semi truck and on your dashboard Mm -hmm. it goes off those are the same indications for it for your body so please please listen to those and see at least a primary care doctor once a year once a year out of 365 days is not a bad deal and should a complete blood panel be done once a year you think that that's definitely okay Uh, yes and in some cases if you have any of the cardio risk factors like high blood pressure or any other cardiovascular disease, a basic EKG once a year is also warranted. So don't let anyone tell you that it isn't. Mm, That's good to know. Yeah. I know that the symptoms of heart attack with women are different than for men. And I don't think that they really even thought about that, uh, except for maybe the past 10 to 15 years. It's kind of interesting. That's right. Some women don't just present the typical heart attack or MI is maybe one side of your arm is having some sort of pain. You're having chest pain, but really some women have back pain. Some people have headaches. So women present differently. Yes, definitely. Hmm. And I have heard that women don't necessarily have as good an outcome if they have a heart attack. It can be far more dangerous to a woman than a man. Yes, the mortality rate when it comes to heart disease and stroke, they may survive the long haul, but they are typically higher rates of death in women than it is for men. So it's very imperative that we actually get and act upon any type of medical emergency quickly. And I'm not sure all women know that, but certainly when they're in a high risk profession, it, mm-hmm. it's uh, definitely something that they need to be mindful of. Yes. Yes. This is important. I think the number one, uh, the number one cause of, uh, not cause, but women, Ten, in, in my case, in, in my area, denial. Mm. Deny that anything is going wrong or, or they'll put it off. Well, you know what? I'll deal with it later. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I'm tough. I've been through worse. You know, I can, I can, I can still finish my shift or I can still. And I think that's the number one thing that, um, I guess, symptom that people should, should pay attention to is that, no, if something is going on, act on it, like you said, immediately. Exactly, exactly. Because that can lead to bigger problems that may yeah. have about for a longer period of time than just a little small stint that you need to address those issues. You're right. People don't want to admit that they have the possibility of having a heart attack. You know, that that wouldn't happen to me. Sort of, mm-hmm. you know, attitude sure. sort of thing. Yeah. Human beings are very good at denial. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, there really should be an, an ability for drivers to have access to healthcare clinics and truck stop areas. I mean, I don't understand why that's not something that we really need to be looking at, especially now that this industry is to the forefront because of the pandemics. And you see yeah. this on the news that you're trying to transfer goods from one port to somewhere else across America. That's And we're in that healthcare access talk now. So I think that should be something we definitely bring up to our policymakers. That would make absolute sense because a lot of the problems drivers have when they're driving the big rigs, they, where do they park? And yes. if it's, you know, they, they would go to a lot of places perhaps when they have the time in a particular city or wherever, but they can't always just, you know, you can't just, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where do you put your rig? You can't just, you know, well, I'll just stop it here on the side of the road. Can't do that. So that would make sense in, in, that environment in a place where there pl- there's plenty of parking and mm-hmm. maybe have a, a separate area just for uh, mm-hmm. people coming in to see the doctors. That would be fabulous. That mm-hmm. would be a nice concierge service, like you said. That would oh, really be would. very awesome to do. Yeah. I think you've come up with a great idea, Dr. West. <laughs> <laughs> You can jump on that and make this go right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm curious. Can you talk a little bit about uh, GI disease? I mean, I, I personally have uh, gastrointestinal issues and digestive issues, and I think it's not something that's really addressed a lot. And can you maybe just uh, 
delve into that a little bit? Like what were, what would be some of the causes or what would uh, be the common um, things that you would see come into your yeah. care? Yeah, definitely. So GI disease is also one of those top regulators for healthcare concerns when it comes to the driving over these long periods of time. So you're not eating correctly. So you're having greasy food, you're having things that's going to cause GI upset, whether it's ulcers, whether it's GERD or this sort of internal vomiting that you may feel these burping sensations. Mm -hmm. um, also, when it comes to actually flushing out your systems, drinking water, not just all of the beverages that has the sodas and the caffeine, that also contributes not only to your blood sugar, but blood pressure, as well as headaches, all of that sweet caffeine thing. So things internally, GI, whatever goes into your gut, your gut actually processes. So you have to be mindful what you put in there. If you have a lot of fast food, maybe you need to have some veggies or something green, something mm -hmm. to help with your bowels moving, as well as just coating the actual stomach, maybe some protein drinks. Those are nice and coating. They come in all different flavors. Mm -hmm. but they have protein in it. And if you can't really stop, you can keep those nearby, have them chilled, yeah. pour it in. Those are awesome to have. What about constipation? I know it's not something people like to talk about, but it's a fact. Yes, right? yes. it happens. Oh, yeah, sure does. And there are natural remedies for constipation. <laughs> some people like coffee. Some people like prune juice. Some people, if they're eating cereal or milk. So yeah. it really depends on that person's GI makeup um, and their body uh, makeup. So whatever that you feel is helping with that, that's also very, very important because you're not drinking enough. So your motility of your gut and your intestines are not moving things around. Mm -hmm. So that can also cause the constipation. And when you're not getting up or you're sitting in your truck for long periods of time, everything is, is stagnant. So yeah, yeah, really moving around. So, helps. Um, I've heard, I, I could be, this could be wrong, that the prolonged use of laxatives is actually really bad for you. Yeah. Like it, it can have some really bad side effects because some people are really, really, really constipated and they just, no matter what they do, nothing seems to move. So they take an excess of dose of laxatives like on a continual basis. Is that bad for you? Yes, it is bad for you. Um, there is probably another underlying problem if you're having massive amounts of, of constipation and this is something that's that's more frequent you would definitely need to see a physician or some sort of provider to help see. you with that because it might be something more that they need to yeah. investigate a colonoscopy perhaps they okay. need to make sure that they're actually looking to make sure you don't have any polyps or anything that's causing this backup you may have okay. some sort of uh, blockage that's causing that and that might be something you really need to really investigate yeah so those laxatives are, are really not good for you mm -hmm. correct yeah yeah okay Good. I, I didn't know that coffee helps with constipation. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't Works drink for coffee. me. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's your witness. <laughs> yep, it's a fact. <laughs> I'm good to go. <laughs> it literally, nobody yeah. there. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh goodness boy. I know my mother used to have me drink prune juice as a child for that mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have a fondness for prune juice obviously but uh, <laughs> that stuff works too yeah cash oil carol oil carol syrup mm -hmm. all of those are natural laxatives as well apricots organic apricots dried apricots when you munch on those that is a very good natural cleanser I'm just putting that out there <laughs> Wow, that's good to know. <laughs> yep, yep, it, it, yeah, it works. Um, I, my, my mom, what she does, because um, she has that, that problem, she will boil um, prunes and apricots, organic, both organic prunes and organic apricots on the stove with a little bit of water for something like 12 hours and slow cook them. And it becomes, they become, you know, like soft. And then she'll just snack on that for whenever she needs to. She'll either put some in her ice cream or she'll just eat it like that. And she says it works like a charm. Wow. Be tasty. The detox, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 So little, little, little things, right? That work. Yes. <laughs> just don't overdo it because you're not going right. to leave the house. <laughs> right. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors, coming up.
Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry, our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. What would be a something that, that's a good basic diet that drivers could have to kind of prevent some of these problems, these issues with constipation and, and keep their system rolling in the right direction? Um, because obviously prevention is, is worth a pound of cure, as we've been told for generations. <laughs> yes, I would definitely recommend a high fiber diet. A lot of natural fruits and veggies have their own mechanisms to help with the fiber. If you need some added fiber, they do have the supplements that are in powder form. I know you've seen the Metamucil and other things, mm -hmm. but just be mindful of not using those as a constant. Um, we were created to have natural resources. So fruit and vegetables, those are the number one sources. And I would recommend anything green, unless you're on some sort of blood thinner, which you would definitely need to make sure that you're careful of eating a lot of green because that can cause more bleeding, as well as a lot of fruit is very important. However, the caveat to fruit is if you're a diabetic, be mindful that there's some fruit that has more heavily weighed sugar than other fruits. So just be mindful of that as well. If you're a diabetic, strawberries are okay though, right? Yes. Know. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are some good fruits if you're a diabetic? Other than strawberries. Watermelon is good. Okay. Uh, banana is good to a certain point. Um, that can have a lot of sugar in it as well. Um, apples are very good. And apple really has a lot of fiber in apples. Um, mm. Pineapple is loaded with sugar. So be careful of pineapples. Okay. That has a lot of sugar in it. The natural mangoes are very good. Plums, apricots, mm. those are very good as well. And not a whole lot of sugar. I like my apples with peanut butter on them. Oh my gosh, so Me do too. I. Oh, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> Celery and peanut butter too. That's my snack at work. Oh. <laughs> so would that be a good snack? I mean, you're getting protein. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Excellent, excellent sources of, of protein and fiber. Yes, definitely recommend. Yeah, because I think that uh, women tend to beat themselves up after they eat something. It's like, well, I shouldn't have eaten that. You know? Yeah having guilt-free eating <laughs> while you're going down the, the road, <laughs> you know. Well, just think in a couple hours, you drink a little coffee, you'll poop it out anyway. So <laughs> <you're okay. laughs> yeah, Absolutely. you'll be fine. No worries. <laughs> Let's worry about something else like world hunger. Who cares about what that is? <laughs> yeah. So what do women so, do with hormone changes and all of that? Because obviously they have uh, monthly cycles and in, depending on the cycle of life, they've got different issues. Um, that's definitely a reality for women drivers, especially sometimes when they're selecting driving later in life. They've uh -huh. got some different challenges that men don't have. Correct. So not only should you be seeing a primary care provider once a year, but you should also be seeing a GYN. Mm -hmm. um, and believe it or not, some hormonal imbalance are regulated and can cause the obesity factor as well, which is, of course, one of our top health care concerns. Right. If your hormones are out of whack, if they're not balanced, whether it's caused by your sleeping, by your eating, hormones can make a difference in your metabolic syndrome as well. So obesity, you're getting stressed, the stress leads to your hormonal balance, you're not eating right. It's a vicious cycle. So making sure that you're in tune to hormones, whether you're still getting your cycle or you've already been through your hormonal change, you have to really be mindful because that's something that your body may need. So you may need something more natural and an OBGYN provider can definitely set you on that path. Sure. Yeah, I think that that presents the cyclical hormones that women deal with, that mm -hmm. presents quite an obstacle to maintaining a healthy weight. Um, yes. Women have a unique situation mm -hmm. there. After mm -hmm. having babies, uh, they can gain weight and they have a hard time getting it off. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on where they are, if, if it's uh, after menopause, women gain weight. Um, it's, it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. 
It can be very frustrating, and I don't think they're always getting the answers they need. Right, right, because a lot of times we don't ask those questions either. We don't indulge that. We kind of keep things to ourselves and say, oh, I'll just get over it or it'll pass, but Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like the menstrual cycle. Some women have them really bad and some don't. Like for, for me, it was absolutely horrible. Every three weeks, uh, it would I would have it. for it would Sometimes it would last up to 14 days. Ooh. Heavy, heavy, heavy with yeah. like just, and you know, for, for the last five years, I just take it on like, oh, it'll stop eventually. But I mean, this is going on every three weeks. It's brutal mm-hmm. and driving and trying to work and cramping and mm-hmm. bloating and this, this, all the pain and just everything and still trying to drive. It was really hard until finally, I just put my foot down. This, this is only last year. I was 51. I'm like, enough already. I had to go see an OGBYN mm-hmm. and say, what is going on? Like, this has got to stop. I ended up uh, having an ablation last November and I've never had a period since. And I've been so happy. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. The freedom. Oh, la, yeah. la, ladies, yeah. take your health into your own hands. If it's really bothering you, do something about it. <laughs> exactly. Because it could be some underlying fibroids yeah. or something else. Yeah, that that's right. what I had. Fibroids. Yeah. Yeah. They, they will do a number. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't yeah. know that. And she said, mm-hmm. Kathy, you could, you should have came here years ago. I could have taken care of this. I'm like, really? I've suffered in silence for like five years for nothing. <laughs> I'm surprised you had the energy. I mean, that just right. Really takes oh, it does. You. Yeah. It would become almost yeah. anemic because the flow it, was so oh, sure. bad. Like I'd oh, had to yeah. wear two pads exactly. and like, it was just flowing through my coveralls onto the seat. And I'm like, seriously, oh. come on. Like, oh, it was bad. It was so bad. But yeah. now, okay. At 52, I have a newfound freedom. Very there you happy. go. Life is grand. <laughs> to heck with the tampons. Yes. To heck with the curtains. <laughs> See ya. <I'm- laughs> I could go swimming. I thought, what was the, the commercial? You- oh, <laughs> yes. <man>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so so that's another thing, you know, um, just ladies, take your health into your own hands. Mm-hmm. We don't need to suffer in silence. Do something about it. Say something. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you do run across doctors that don't have a great bedside manner and they mm-hmm. really don't like a bunch of questions. Mm-hmm. My suggestion is find another doctor. Amen. That's right. Yes. 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 There's a reason why we have second and third opinions because yes. you want the knowledge and you want someone who's really going to be a person who's going to take care of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah, I really found that actually. Um, my mother was disabled and I would take her into the doctor and so forth. And I remember changing doctors for her um, because there was a, it was an older doctor, male doctor, and he kind of blew her off. You know, it's like, well, well, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, this is not happening. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to be your own self, self-advocate, self even for others yeah. who can't speak up. So that's very important. The health field is too mm-hmm. complicated yeah. not to, to, to do that. And you have to take mm-hmm. care of me. Yeah, definitely. I would recommend that always. Even as a provider, if there's something going on and that person isn't asking the right questions or you feel like they're not taking the proper time with you, Definitely. You you have nothing to, to lose if you decide to have a, a second opinion or decide to change providers. Exactly. So Dr. West, where do people find you? You have some wonderful information here, and I think that people can benefit and, and maybe uh, get some new insight on how to better their health while they're on the road. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, you can find me. Very simple. It's my name, www.noellacwest.com. And it's Noella C. West throughout Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So very simple. Once you know my name, you know me. No, lovely. <laughs> so do you um, answer questions if people were to email you? or? Yes, yes. Um, I can answer questions. And if there's questions that I'm not aware of, I have a lot of different colleagues in the healthcare profession that I can always um, actually demonstrate or, or refer you to. So that's definitely a, a good thing. Yes. Oh, that's a huge resource, especially when Wonderful. drivers are going across country and mm-hmm. they need to see somebody. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you, Dr. West. You oh. are a wealth of information. Thank oh, you. Kidding. Thank you so much. Uh, so remember when this is all said and done, there is importance in keeping the wheels moving, as truck drivers, my dad used to say, but keep healthy while you're riding. So I want to thank you and Michelle and Kathy for all you do as far as focusing on topics for women and women truckers, because behind every successful woman is a tribe of other successful women. <laughs> so, yeah. 
yes. totally, I totally thank you all for, for doing this Amen. for your life-changing sources. So thank, thank you, you so much, Dr. West. <laughs> That's so awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest. You've just been absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to sign up right now on, on Facebook. <laughs> All <laughs> right, friends. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. And you all take care. And you all are doing such a, a wonderful thing and making a mark for this healthcare with women. I, I oh. love you all for that. Thank you so oh. very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. West. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye now. You've been listening to Women Road Warriors with Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show, or have a topic or feedback, email us at info at tncradio.live. Thank you for listening to another great interview on tncradio.live. All of the material you hear on tncradio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of tncradio.live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live.